Uzbekistan'da birden ki iki de tok kız bal ogen iki de namzat çıktı. Ben çıkan bir şey masa size karar hemen yarım yapıyorum. I want to say I'm really excited to be here, guys. It's literally my first interview with anyone ever. Well, <laughs> we, we, we, we would like to stop you here. <laughs> okay. All right. Sure. I do share the same feeling. I do yeah. share the same fear. I think. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Then I'll just leave it at that. Okay. What I'm trying to say is like everything has to go your way to get that nine. Examiner was not a native. I was trying to send message to the, you know, to the universe, to the God, in a way like. Like you keep thinking about all of these different scenarios. Like, what if I get a nine? I'm going to be popular instantly, and everyone's going to know. Um, uh, you you don't really have to have these expectations. Yeah, give me a minute. Like, give me a break. I I'm not sure how to. I'm, I I don't know how to respond to that. You don't actually need that nine to be happy. Assalamu alaikum. Hürmetli Edu Action Center YouTube kanalına abone açıları ve Edu Podcast kursa tuğumuzu muhlisleri. Bugün nabattaki sonumuzda kızıq boladı. Cüdeyem. Çünkü günü keçimini 3. Mart günü Uzbekistan'da birden ki 2 de tok kız bal ogen 2 de nomzot çıxdı. Bittesi bu Begzat Mirahmedev Aylzon Oku Merkezi Asasçısı ve Rahbarı. İkincisi Muhammed Ali Sadiqov. Bukhara'daki Ad Astra School e, Oku Merkezi'ni co-founder. Yani e, founderlardan biri. Hop, bugün yukarısa tuğumuzda ilk kere mekmanımızdan hem özdegini e, kanaka experience'leri bu yani yani Kanaka uyları, yani tavsiyeleri, geleceği de topşırdığın kaynatlı için nimeli tavsiyeli bir iş adı. Yani özlegini, hazır ki hissiyatlıgi, kanaka hayacağın, kanaka güddeyem bütün Uzbekistan hatta kuçede o diyorken taksi hayda uçlardan tartıp İngiliz dilindeki umum alakası yok olan adamlayan iki de adamını tanıp hamacayda bildi. Hop, ıı, avalan bor kegen ilgi rahmet. İyi, yani bitten her sene etip koyuşumuz gerek ki, e, bugünkü korsatuğumuz yani İngiliz stili de koprağ boladı. Koprağ kısmı İngiliz stili de. Sebabı e, ikkili namzotta ham speakingler tok kızdı ve etey. Yani bize, bize de tok kız bulmasın ya. Lekin savallanı. Uzbek ve İngiliz stili de aralaş. Bu hiç kanakı resmi sıkıbatmaz. O şanı için e, birinci bölüp kanakı buldu. Şu payet keçe Uzilani own story, experience yapır bir işten başlasi. Kimden başlayınız? Bu işte ki? Avalan bol, sağolun ekim. Barışa, ya kaysi kamerayı yarab yap, yap, yap, yapmış, farkı yok mu? Bak, siz yarab yapıyorum, evet. imlerine yarab. Benim için kamerayı şey yapmazsa, siz yarab, hemen yarab yapıyorum. Taklif için rahmet. Güdeyem, çıralı, suhbat buladı diye umut tamam. Şimdi uzun da experience mi geldi diye bu sek. Şimdi o şey konu... 28 fevral günü indi, mən imtihanga girdim. Mən imtihanga... Şimdi hazır... Misal üçün uşağı hazır cüdeyem kop şu bu içi diskarşılar böyle yaptı, başka narsalar böyle yaptı. Mən özü birinci nabətdə aytı bu için gerek ki tabrikle mağcım. Şu, aynen şu Edu, Edu Podcast'da. Edu Podcast layıqası da Muhammed Ali'ni mən balımla tabrikle mağcım. Cüdeyem kətli yutuq. Aynen mənim özümü alıqınımdan, şunca ayağın stop şirgen eksperiyensimdən, şunca yıllık eksperiyensimdən kep çıxıp ayet şirin mümkün ki, bu narsanın 23 yaşta qılış taxşı. Bu şunca ki, söz bilen ayı tasvirlaş qeyim de hazır. Şimdi 28 fevral günü imtihanga kirdim. Şimdi o şey payıttı. Mesela ki, eğer o çıkıp o gendi, 19 fevral günü. Kattı ihtimali bile kirmezdim ben imtihanga. Şunu hem doğru düşünmüş gereği de, mesela ki, ben çünkü bir toks çıkandan ki, bir tane ya orkastan kiriş, bu cüde kattı yük. Yük, nasıl yapalım? Mesela ki, Aynı kısa mani keyisimde bu hama kütüadı, kani indi bu sefer topşır gendin ama bunlar uzun. Yani, Misal ki bari kütüme iyi, bu dağşatlı yük. Şunun için 28. günü kredi gendimde bu, buna hiç kanaka yüksüz kirdi. Hmm. Netice çıxdı, netice çıxandı. Hiç kanaka no clue bari. Kursan bu oldu mi indi uzun için. Lekin kanadır bir metse buladı. Xud şu narsa bol iş gereği deydi. Çünkü ben olduları... 
kırgan man, kutkan man toqqız, oqşama gən, qanadır o ziz disappointment qob bo gəndə. Şu disappointmentlər bu məkəni uçun, ah, alright, hər qələy, şu nəticə kütüyat gəllərdə disappoint qəmədəm ozum, ozum, ozum əleyqələ aldım digən mənada, yaxşı pozitif feeling boldi. Endi toğrısını etəmə, buna xoşa xoşu qob gətədi, bu ilə məkəndim. Bütün ələgə, şu telegramdəgə, kanallərə gə başqa, mənəmcə bunu bir Yənə bitə səbəbədən biri, ismin Beqzadlıqə, hazır gündə əşələdəyə, Beqzad ismi trendləliqə, mənəmcə səbəbən bu olubdə oyləyəmə. Çünki mənim Telegram ülüzlərə də oşə uçun qoyləyəm. Spitsəyənə oşə uçun. Başqa, misal üçün, qiyin. Yəndi ki, əbətdən ki, bu yəngilik çıxdı, yəngilik çıxqandan ki, Muhammed Ali dəyəm çıxqanı. Yəndi bu nəfsəni, mən o zəqələn əytkən mən. Muhammed Ali oşə Kanalda əqnalı çıxıqəm mən, əgər məsələ üçün, əgər əm deməkəm mən, məsələ, şü kandidat Muhammedan Sadiqov, demək ki, Ben Nainqə ing layıq kandidatlardan bir öz bəksəndəm. Yəndi etibar bəlgəm bəsələri, mən adətdə kanalımda başqa instruktor haqqıda heç qəçən yazmaqəm mən, şübə etkəcə. Dəcə, podcastlərdə, yəm soruşadı, əli gənəqə, spot ki, qoymaq ki, bələşət dəmə, nəm sələsən, so, who do you think, you know, is the whoever. Ləkin, o şənəqə cəylərdə adətdə avoid qələmən, like, odamlərdə ısım bələn əyətişkə, yəkə kimdir də əcrət kursa əyətişkə, çünki xəfə bu qələ, dəni, gəl qaçı xəməmiz üzümüz, yəqqən əliqələrimiz, əlçin instruktorlar, əyniqsə uzumu pəkələni dəqələrim bələn, cüdəyəm yəqqən mən, ləkin, Qorqi pətlə təqələş gərək, yaş pəkələyinələrdən özə cüdəyəm bizə məcbur qıl, mən şəxsə mənə məcbur qıl deyək, qoqəm mənə pəkələyinəm deyək, IELTS instruktorlərdə qanadır bir discourage-əm qaldı deyək məndə, üçlə yaşlar, qanadır bir biyoqə çıxıb, mən tiçkə yəni bir mətələyə xəmək çıxıb, mən yəndə özüm şun ərsəni xıs qılıb, top şərişdə davam etdim, əgər şun üçün nəmədir yüz bərgən, onu çünə ərsəs xalət, speaking-də, həqiqətdə mən Muhandan speaking-də keçə birinci mərdə deyişdim, e, hayran mən, nəmə üçün səkis qoyul gəni, o şə bəyət dədə, mən hayran mən, nəmə gəni, şünə bu gəni, əndi, bəlkə, şünə bol iş kəri bu gəni gəni gəni, so, yeah, it's hard to describe. Mən özəm, əlgənə mə kotar amə etur gəndə, yəni, o şünə qəb, həm basım asını qab getkən bəyət Harqəli şu nərsəni ilk kişi əndəliyə qılamız digən mənada da. Çünki bitti adam ki, cüdəyəm qeyyəm bunu məsuliyyətdə. Bir gündə çıxışı əndə qələti, cüdəyəm. Çünki nəticə çıxqandan ki, əlbəttə xursan boləsiz. Tim bəli, mənə özüm əliginəmdə kib çıxı durgan musik. Şu nərsəni mənim ki, Muhammed Ali'dən qorə mən qopraq orqasdan qoğub şunu xoxla bir gəni bu zəmini qorunub durubdu. Muhammed Ali'nin dəyərləyəli ki, əncə, he's too calm. He's not really... He wasn't really after this, probably. And so is Muhammad Ali Yamir Si. Okay, yeah. Muhammad Ali. Thanks, appreciate well, that. Like, experience? Yeah, sure. Thoughts. Like, first off, I want to say I'm really excited to be here, guys. It's literally my first interview with anyone ever. Yeah, I've been lately getting a lot of offers from people like, can you come on our show and, you know, talk a little about yourself and, you know, share your story. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll see about that. I, I hate saying no to people, so... I figured this place would be the right place to start. So yeah, and and I wanna, I wanna you know put it out there and say that I admire you a lot. I've been yeah, because you know something I've been I've I've realized over the past couple of years is uh, you might be the you know smartest person in the world, but <laughs> but but no no, no I'm, I'm speaking, I wouldn't go I'm, that I'm, far, but yeah, yeah I'm, okay. ta- I'm speaking generally like you might be the smartest person in the world, but it's hard to beat age experience. I, I, I figured that, like, first off, I, I, I want to really say that I have tremendous respect towards you and the job you've been doing over the years. You've inspired millions. And, and, and even back in university, like, uh, me and my friend would constantly talk about you. So you're sort of an inspiration to us. Well, so, it's, yeah, yeah, likewise. It's, it's everything, whatever you say. I've heard it from these guys. I've heard it from, like, we never had a chance to, you know, uh, have this, uh, and, and, and it's been hap- now it's happening in, on this podcast, but we've never talked before in person. Uh, so, I, yeah, I do want to say, thank you, thank you, but go on. Yeah, sure. As for my exam experience, I got into this whole, you know, whole Ben 9 race. 
I, I'm not sure if we can call call it that. Uh, probably about a year ago, when my friend suggested that we, you know, come to Tashkent and see the city, you know, take the city aisles. It was my first time setting the city aisles, and and I was like, okay, sure, let's do it. And that was that was actually my first eight point five, and I got a little disappointed because my speaking score was eight, and I'm like, okay, I need to do it again, but I don't want to come all the way to Tashkent to the test because this whole traveling experience it freaks me out, and I I think it's like a big hassle. Yeah. Like so, and that's actually the reason why I said no when you know the first time you invited to to the show, and my friend was like, I just got a phone call from IDP, and they want you on the show, and they want you know have an interview with me with you, and you know both of us, and I'm I'm, I'm like, but I am not traveling all the way up to Tashkent just to sit an interview. <laughs> I'm just too lazy, I guess. So. And but but this time I think I have a good enough reason to come here and uh, and one of the reasons why I wanted to do this do this interview in the first place is because I really wanted to meet you in person and thank you thank yeah, you yeah and and so uh, I think I went off on a tangent a little so I'm supposed to talk about my exam experience right so and so the last two attempts I really thought I had it yeah. like last two attempts because everything was well executed. You sort of get a feeling. You say, okay, this time it's going to be a nine. So, uh, because you like go over everything over and over and over again and you say, okay, there's no way something might have gone wrong. So, so when my results came out back in December, it was a little disappointing because I got speaking 8.5 after two nines in a row. So, and and I was like, okay, I, I got to do it again, but I don't want to rush into it, so I need to take my time. So with me, uh, every time I sit the exam, I need to do you know sort of prep. And uh, with me, there like there are three aspects to it. Yeah. There is the you know there is the most important aspect is the technical aspect. You're supposed to be good at English, so. And then there is the you know if, if th there are two other aspects which don't often get talked about. They are physical and the mental. So when I say physical, I mean, you need to be well rested. You need sleep. So it's so underrated these days. So uh, on top of that, I think you should do some physical exercise like cardio and stuff to learn manage anxiety and stuff. So, and there is the mental aspect, which I think is probably the hardest because like you keep thinking about all these different scenarios, like what if I get a nine? I'm going to be popular instantly and everyone's going to know about me. And, and at, with me, it felt kind of a little overwhelming because, you know, at such a young age and with all that stuff going for me. And, and I'm like, okay, buddy, you need to get it together and you need to make it happen this time. So I said, okay, I'm all in. Let's make it happen. So uh, a week before my exam, it was, I think, the... the toughest. I'm talking about my most recent attempt. It was the toughest because I went through, I, I, at the time I was going through something personal and I was trying to manage that with my work life and, and I had exam coming up. So it was like everything all at once. If you, if you, you know, if you know what I mean. And so I, I, you know, I tried hard not to give into depression and power, power my way through it. And I, I was confident, you know, in terms of like technical prep, like writing essays, because we write essays every class and I'm constantly posting them on, on Telegram so other people can benefit from, from them as well. So, and so uh, the, the most difficult part was, I think, the, you know, psyching yourself up, getting ready for the exam. And, and that's the part where you need some maturity. So I realized that this is not something I can do within a year or a couple of years. Like you need, and, and being the guy I am who is very reserved and doesn't talk much and constantly avoids, you know, cameras and social media and stuff, I said, uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm ready for it. I'm, I'm not like, I really like to keep a low profile and I don't like it when people, you know, too many people are involved. So I try to keep my circle small. So... And so there's the, the stress management aspect, which I think was the most difficult. So now uh, let me talk a little about the exam date itso itself. So I just 
showed showed up to work like it was a regular day and had a couple of speaking interviews with my students who were going to sit their exam about the same time but different venue and and every time i'm sitting the exam i'm telling my students like it's not me it's my twin <laughs> that helps you know take the edge off like i'd like to separate it into two identities oh, okay so yeah. like yeah. Uh, there is the me version of me who takes sits the test he gets all the attention he gets all the credit and there is identity too like my alter ego and that guy uh, it's just me i get to be me right yeah, yeah. i can just live a normal life and I, I, it's just my sort of coping mechanism uh, this is how i deal with it i'm not sure if it works for other people so and yeah, um, and, and my students totally get it. Like every time they ask me, teacher, did you sit the exam? No, it's, it was my twin. Sorry, it's not me. <laughs> all right, when the results come out, uh, you, you got a nine, you got an 8.5. No, all the credit goes to my twin. Okay, <laughs> not me. So, so uh, it's my way of downplaying things and you know, trying not to make big deal out of, out of them. So on the exam day, I showed up to the venue and there was a guy, uh, uh, a friend of mine, I guess, he was there and we had a little con conversation right before the interview and, and everything was going great. So it was finally the interview time and it was my turn. I you know, just headed in and started the conversation. I, I sort of had a feeling I wasn't going to get a nine that time because the examiner was not a native. And I have a theory. I don't mean to discredit the test center. <laughs> well, we, we, we would like to stop you here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Sure. No problem then. It's, I, no, just, I, I do share the same feeling. I do yeah. share the same theory, I think. Yeah. Bits. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Then I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Well, just move you on. can say it like this, but I would say like, this is not always like this. No, no. Because of, uh, of course, like native speakers also, yeah. the <laughs> men's score fluctuates always. So, and, and it's not my way of making up for my bad English because sometimes I do speak bad English. So like, it's not like every day I, you know, get to, you know, go to go to school and sound like a native. This whole facade I've created over the years, it's it's not sometimes there. So I have to go out of my way sometimes to you know make it work. And so the interview, I got a close topic. I talked about a friend of mine, and then part three also went pretty well. And I was like, okay, I think I got nine this time speaking because uh, no hesitation, vocabulary was there and a uh, right reaction. And then finally, the other three aspects, uh, reading, listening, and writing. So the first two, reading, listening, they, they were pretty good. And then uh, writing part, I got, a, I got a really strange topic. It was mixed type. So, but I think I did fine. I wasn't expecting 8.5 or anything because for that, your writing has to be exceptional. But it was a tough question. I think you shared the question about what, like, uh, country success, right? Uh, but, but economic. Lucky me, my major is economics with finance. Oh, so. okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, I had no tough time writing task two, but with task one, I got a double graph. So I, I, I feel like it's like my, not like my, Blind By the way, spot. the question, where did you graduate? Where did you study? Uh, I, I went to one of the universities here, Westminster, Westminster, International University. So economics with finance. Right. The next so, question is how you come from finance in, to teaching. Uh, that's a great question. I still wonder what I'm doing teaching <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And so well, what I think is a lot of people at, sort of put it down to my family background, because uh, my parents are teachers. So yeah, uh, I think a lot of it comes down to it. But I'd like to, I don't really like this whole idea of putting people in boxes and saying like, you're a teacher or you're an entrepreneur or you're an accountant. I'd like to think of myself as like, man, I, I can be anyone. I want to be like, lately I've been doing a lot of other things on top of teaching, like been doing my own research on fitness and health and I've uh, I've also been learning how to train people. I mean, physically, like, and uh, yeah, many more. I I'm I'm, in, I'm into you know reading stuff. 
So, and I'm, I've recently been introduced to this whole uh, entrepreneurial thing, like, because me and, my, me and my friend recently founded our school and, you know, you gotta be a teacher sometimes, sometimes uh, think like an entrepreneur, like a manager. So, but I, for the record, I want to say I'm, I'm a teacher first and entrepreneur second. Okay. I would like to give one question to both of you. Uh, how did you come up with the names of your education centers? Like yeah, IELTS Zone. IELTS Zone, yeah. Okay, so we started out in 2015, I think. Um, when, when I started this school, I, I had a friend just like him. I actually had a very close friend who was with me all the way, but he I, I was the only founder. So he wasn't really, um, like uh, legally, he, he wasn't the co-founder, but he was there like for me, you know, supporting me and everything. So he suggests the name thinking that like IELTS Zone, like the one, So the, but again, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with pronunciation is, is slightly off, but if you think in terms of like Russian accent, right? Yeah. Zone, <laughs> the one. So, and it, it made sense to me. It made sense to me, even though, again, I, I kind of, you know, I didn't really see it that way, but uh, Isle Zone kind of made sense to me from that perspective. It's, it's all right. So um, yeah, that's probably the story. Okay. What it. about Ad Astra? What does this mean? Okay. And... Uh, for, for the record, uh, the pronunciation is Ad Astra. Ad Astra, guys, try saying it a couple of times. Too. So I should be looking this way, right? The camera. So Ad Astra, it comes from Latin. It, it means to the stars through hardships and difficulties. It's actually idea. Uh, and complete honesty, we borrowed it from someone way smarter than us. So um, that's Elon Musk. You might have guys guessed it already. So he's got a school for his own kids and, you know, kids of his staff. And I really like this name because it really resonates with our core values. Like we, we think life is all about learning. And, and just when you think you've conquered the mountain, there is another one waiting. So you just keep going and going until you finally reach the stars, which you'll never will so you just gotta keep going in life no okay follow what up happens. the question like you said but uh when you uh, achieve something there's something more so does this mean that you will go <laughs> further <laughs> further than nine <laughs> was the nine the final I, I destination got a, i got a really interesting story to share so you see your results came out in the morning And I started getting text messages from my well, friends and like, students. Let, let me say, <laughs> that the results were released at the same time. Uh -huh. You were sent email about your remark change, right? In the morning. Yeah. And Bizot Mehamedov also got his results. Because we get the messages and we just send it out. Yeah. So uh, I just want to tell everyone, results were released the same time, same day. So <laughs> keep in mind. Yeah. Anyway, he beat me to it. <laughs> so there's that. So, yeah, back to what I was saying. Uh, this interesting, so your friends inter text you. Yeah, interesting story. So when, when I received that message, and I was like, uh, he totally deserves that. I was really happy for you, and I was going to reach out to you, congratulating you on your... And then when I got to work, I you know, fired up my laptop and checked my email first thing in the morning. I, actually, that was my friend, I think, who... Uh, who told me I should probably check my email. Maybe I received my EOR results and I like, I went online and when I checked my inbox, it was there. It said, there has been a change and that's all I needed. Like a semblance of hope. That, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. that moment, I'm like, okay, there's a chance they might have updated my writing and speaking to 8.5. I wasn't expecting right. there would be yeah. a one point jump in my speaking. Correct, yeah. So you wouldn't expect and that. I, like, I try not to get ahead of myself, and I was like, "Okay, buddy, you need to calm down. What if there is just half a score jump? What if, you know, it's eight point five overall again?" And I was like, first, first thing that crossed my mind was like, "Okay, sure, I can still make some kind of an, you know, impact in my community, and I can still, I can sort of still make a buzz if I." get two nines in a row. Right. Three yeah. nines in a row. <laughs> four nines to, to, in a to row. To make up for it, yeah. Yeah, just just to make up for it. Yeah. yeah. And and to me, actually, it, 
it's just a number. My my whole reason for taking the exam over and over again is not really to impress people. It's the last thing I want. So it's just to you know, show people out there that you can be a non-native and you can reach a na native level w through dedication and all that stuff, you know, people talk about on social right. media. Yeah. But how, how did you feel now? I, let, let me get, you know, yeah. let me just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. So how did you feel about like overall trying, like, I'm not sure how, how many times you've tried the, taking the yeah, test. I, actually, uh, so I look back, I, for the first time I said the test, Back in 2015, I guess. And 15. 15. Okay. It was yeah. it was a failed attempt, a really bad score. And what is bad score for you? Uh, Six point five. Yeah. <laughs> so you start off at the, the, yeah with the same scores. So I, I yeah. Back in 2006, that was my score as well. So, so, so yeah. yeah. And then and then I made a jump to 7.5 within like three months, I think. It was I and. I probably was like an age thing again, experience thing. When you're in the exam, you get anxious and you're a teenager, impulsive, you, know, you can't control your nerves. So, and then later I had to receive the test because I was looking for a job and I thought I could land a better one if I had the eight overall, because it was like all the rage, everyone wanted an eight. Now it's 8.5 now, and, and, and then, and now, and then that, now it's nine, like it's just, keeps going up. So back then it was eight and I reset the test and got overall eight with 8.5 and spe speaking. That, that was my first 8.5. And then, and then uh, fast forward to 2020, I guess. Yeah, I did it again. And then, so seven times, past seven attempts, all 8.5. So in total it's like 11. Yeah. 11. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, and how did you feel about like not getting the right score, not really, you know, getting to this? Like, obviously, you were really hoping for a nine, I think, for the past a year or two, I think, right? So, yet yeah, you keep taking the test and you keep like failing. And I, I have the same feeling. I share the same feeling, but I just want to hear from you, like, because I already ex uh, expressed that feeling in, in my yeah. text message. Like, I, I thought, like, my last two exams, I thought, like, there's some sort of, um, you know, this glass ceiling thing, it was like discriminating against maybe this certain, you know, uh, nationality, like being Uzbek, maybe we have uh, this difficulty of breaking through that, right? So I, I know it's not, it's, it's not a good thing, you know, especially for the reputation of the test, but did you like have the same feeling or like... Uh, every time the results would come out, I would get really disappointed at myself and and but last two attempts I was I was crazy angry because I felt I I thought I finally yeah. did it. Yeah. And it was like it feels like being on top of the Mount Everest mm -hmm. and then Not just when you to, think yeah. you're you've reached the peak the mountains slides right under you. It's gone and you're back to zero. And and it it's taught me a really good perspective, really interesting perspective. And that is things happen for a reason. You always gotta look for a silver, you know, every cloud has got a silver lining. That's the expression yeah, yeah, they use. Yeah, yeah. So and and I I, I started you know, developing this scratch mentality, which is basically you are extremely good at something, you try hard things and you fail, you go back to zero and start all over again. It takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of, uh, I think, commitment. But it, it, it, it, this whole experience, I think, teaches you things you can't learn from a school. Exactly. Or yeah. in taking it's, a program, yeah. like personal qualities, like you get to develop things like uh, uh, patience, like which is very scarce these days, People are short-tempered, yeah, like they yeah, yeah. want things to happen fast, instantly, but they don't realize that good things take time to build. So you gotta have some patience, right? So, and it, it taught me how to develop equanimity. It's like, uh, you know, staying calm in difficult situations and not letting, you know, bad things get the better of you. Yeah. You just gotta keep, try to reframe uh, setbacks into positive things, like your into your goals, and constantly remind of your you remind yourself of your ultimate mission, which was uh, which is uh, which is I guess it's I'm not sure if other people are, can relate to that, but with me, it's trying to reach you know my full potential and trying to share it with and try to help other people do the same. So 
I, I know it kind of sounds altruistic and, and, and people might think like this guy is being delusional, like, but uh, it's worth trying. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it's a great journey to take. And, and finally to share this result with uh, someone like you. Yeah, that's, that's so, interesting. Like, like, what, like with me, this exam experience, I don't really uh, mind it if I'm getting a nine or 8.5 with me. It's all the little, you know, nuggets of realizations, like epiphany, like aha moments. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm really after. So, yeah, the the whole experience. Um, the, the the thing is, I've I've been taking the test. Like I was taking the test. Uh, I think more frequently in in the year twenty twenty two after I scored this eight point five for writing. Uh, finally, like I started seeing this band nine. Right, like, I, I I felt like it was really close. Uh, so I start taking the test more often. Um, but uh, what I realized now, now in retrospect, now looking back, I realized that I wasn't really practicing writing. And I, I was kind of inspired by you guys, by two of you, like basically posting your essays almost on a daily basis. And I was like, what am I doing? Like, I'm, I've, I've been taking the test over and over without really, you know, putting in the effort, uh, without really practice. So in a way you pushed me to keep, you know, to keep writing. Uh, so I start doing this marathon thing in, in, in summer, um, this writing marathon. And then I actually found this guy, Ildor Mukhtarov. He's, he's also another uh, 8.5 holder. And we start working together. So I tried to set up this partnership with someone just like you had. So because I, I felt like that was the key to maybe, you know, continuous, uh, you know, practice pushing yourself, right? So I, I found this guy, but we did it like uh, th through this marathon thing. So we start writing essays. Uh, at least like three, four times a week. And he's, he was giving me this uh, feedback uh, for, for, for my work. And I was uh, also, he, he was, he's really good at like, if, he, if he's now listening to this, he's really good at like um, giving person, other people feedback rather than, you know, like he's also, his English is great too. So, so we were working together and I started realizing like uh, writing is the hardest skill to, you know, uh, craft, so to speak. And it takes time. And it was, it was really hard, like teaching, I, I've been instructing, I've been teaching IELTS for all these years. I have scored eight in the past, like in the past, like I, I, I did, I think I, the first time I scored eight for writing was back in 2017, but it was like, it was just one, one time thing. And then it was back to seven, 7.5 again. So the, the, the thing is when, you, when you start seeing results and you start, you know, getting these hopes, like, like you, like you said, and then you're, you're trying to. With, with me, there are a lot of like ice and there were like ice on me and then there were a lot of expectations. Everyone was really expecting that I would get this nine and, and it, it just puts a lot of pressure. And I, I, I realized like if it's, it's okay that when I made that, made that post about you, you know, becoming uh, a niner, uh, possibly eventually sometime, uh, I, I made that like it was, I was really sincere about, you know, my... Uh, words and uh, because you were really coming through, you were you were really making some progress, and so in a way you were really pushing me to my limits too. So great, there was a great kind of e even though there wasn't a direct competition, it was in a way, and you know it felt good. So I started again. So I started uh, writing essays more often, and as as you point, like my my whole idea of uh, like getting this nine was I wanted to achieve it before the new year for, for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I wanted to end the year with Band 9. So I registered for like three back-to-back -back exams, I think, in December, the last, right, the um, last few days of December. I came really close. I think I scored like eight twice. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Uh, and then when the results came out, it was really disappointing. It was really like... I uh, I had no idea what what went wrong, and I I, I was thinking I was trying to reflect on this experience. I I, w I was about to give up. So you would <laughs> probably you would have you know gotten all that attention. I, I was actually about to give up, and then I actually I, I told my wife like, all right, let's just go out. I, I just want to go out, have some coffee. Um, I want to talk to you. I just wanted to talk to somebody. And she was just the person that I wanted to talk to. And we went out, we had some coffee and uh, I started saying like, listen, I think I've been, because it, it really puts a lot of pressure on my family as well that I've been, you know, chasing after this and then 
not really spending. I've been spending some time, but you know, it, it takes a toll on and a lot's very stressful for the family as well. And they've been supporting me as well. So I was having this very honest conversation, heartfelt, like, look, uh, I, I know that I've been a you know bad husband, uh, bad father maybe because you know I've I've been uh, I've been uh, this the selfish about myself and trying to achieve this result and putting my uh, priorities before this family thing and. <laughs> I know that she she has a good heart and she understands. She, I actually, I think in a way, I wanted to kind of somehow get her support because I knew that you know she would you know come uh, come along and and and and support me psychologically. And she said, "Look, listen, you you have to do it. Like you've been trying to you know so hard. It's it's it's just you can't really quit now. You're you're in the middle of the you know thing race and." It's not so much of a race, but it's it's racing against yourself. Like it's really competing against yourself. At, at this point, I'm like again, like if you look at all these other guys who are coming close to Band Nine, they're they're like ten years younger than me. So like, there's a difference of age. There's a difference of uh, experience, and not just like experience with like. Uh, in a positive way, but they have different experience of learning the language. They have different experience of taking the test. They have different experience of being exposed to the th- things that we weren't really exposed to at your age. So uh, I was competing. You know, I had probably um, kind of old-fashioned uh, or weapon weaponry, so to speak. And you guys had some pro because of your partnership, because of your you know all the tools you you had. Again, I'm not really taking a, taking anything away from you, but in in a way, it was kind of scary for me. Like I'm all alone. I have no like any anybody from my generation anymore. It's just these guys really, you know, coming after me. And it's like, especially you being the, you know, very close. It was like, okay, I'm I'm I'm about to give up. And nobody would blame me if I just gave up that day. Nope. Like I would have made this uh, announcement like officially, just like other people uh, who made the uh, announcement. So that I would I would have just said, look. I've tried my best. This IELTS thing doesn't really work. Uh, no, no, no, I was gonna say that. I was gonna. I, I told him. I told. I told you, right? I told you that this just just doesn't work. Like, if probably if the standards change in the future, it might be possible to get to get a nine. But at this point, I, I just don't see any other way. I just don't see any other way, right? Like, so I was about to quit, and then she re- she really encouraged me to keep trying and. It was a very you know, heartfelt conversation anyway. So I went back, I think it was December 30th. So I went back and I started practicing writing like right on the New Year's Eve, like December 31st. So I, I remember writing t- like task one and task two, and she was really trying to find some like experts, so to speak, to have my writing checked and <laughs> give me feedback, right? But uh, she found someone like, uh, yeah, she was, she was trying to find some uh, like friends, some teachers, uh, to to to get some feedback from my writing, and she was really like, and then she was pushing me. All right, so let's do some speaking. To, uh, talk, talk, let's uh, let, let's do some part two. Let's talk talk, talk about uh, someone who she was trying to choose the toughest part two questions. Like talk about someone who I don't know, like what, what was the uh, who likes uh, growing plants or something. Right. So I was like, oh okay, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. So uh, in a way, I I felt. Like, okay, so probably I have to do it. Like, I have to finish what I started, uh, no matter what. So I I set my eyes on getting this nine thing before my birthday, which is today, uh, before the start of spring. And um, I'm happy that I achieved it. I'm happy that, uh, you know, I finally got it. Although, again, I probably taken the test more times uh, than than this guy or than any, probably anybody else. But... um, that's what it is. And then again, so February 12th, I, I actually took the test with um, the Bridge Council. I was really close yeah. to getting that nine and um, I, I wasn't really sure about my writing score. I, um, I, I, I applied for an EUR and then it came back like a day after with no, no, no change or anything. So I w- at that time, I was really sure that something was. But it just, like you said, it's like you have to pull yourself together. You have to start over. So, and then uh, th- that was with 
when the result came out was uh, February 15, right? Like, so and then I like picked this date. I was taking the test with a BC uh, on Sundays because you get to do both like the main test and the speaking on the same day. And then it's kind of far from my um, apartment. So after, I don't want to drive there like two, two days in a row. So uh, I was picking the Sunday, you know, exams with the, with the BC. So the, the, uh, I decided to uh, kind of take like nine days break from taking the IELTS. And I wanted to focus on nine on, on writing. So I wanted to get nine on writing. So I took like nine days apart. I, I, I convinced myself, all right, so if I write like, a, a, like a full uh, writing test, full test uh, every day, like for the next nine days, hopefully. Then, and I was really hoping this, there, there's this uh, thing that I was telling you about, this inspirational thing as well, like this spiritual thing as well. Like I was trying to send message to the, you know, to the universe, to the God in a way like, okay, so if I give you like nine days of hard work, just give me band nine for writing, right? So, uh, so I, the, the, the EOR result didn't really change that mindset. Like I was really determined to sit down, do my writing. So I start writing every day and I missed two days, like uh, the first Saturday and Sunday. And then I, I tried to make up for it. And, and, and I kid you not, like I, I only got to write like eight essays. <laughs> and you got and eight you, for you, your you, writing. Yeah. <laughs> and the rest is history. So I got eight. So it, in a way it kind of worked. It kind of worked because the last day of my practice, I managed to write two essays just to make up for it. And I was like, okay, eight is enough. Like for band nine overall, eight is enough. So I'm just going to, I'm okay with this, right? So, and then I took the test with the BC on 26th of February and the result came out and th there were some problems with the, the whole. So it was a bad experience. Um, so I, when the result came out, it was again, 8.5 with, uh, eight in writing, but listening was, uh, 8.5 as well. So, and then my only hope was to take the test. I knew that I was taking the test, um, on the 28th, I had already registered with the IDP. Uh, initially I was going to register on, on, for, for, for Monday exam, right? But, uh, it would, there was only a morning session available. So I had to do it for Tuesday. So I took the test, uh, on, on Tuesday, uh, there was an afternoon session. I did the test. I had the face-to-face -face speaking test. Um, I, and again, for the record, I had never scored the band nine, uh, on, on the face to face exam. Like I had scored band nine, like f four times before with the IDP, but never in the, the face to face exam. So it was kind of, it, it was kind of, in a way it was lucky. So, uh, but test went really well. Uh, I had a very smooth conversation with the examiner. It was, it was great. There was this, you, you could tell that there was this, you know, um, uh, some sort of, um, uh, understanding, uh, yeah, dynamic, uh, report. So like you, sh I could tell that she was kind of relieved to have this, you know, candidate who could finally, you know, speak some English. Uh, but, um, so I, I had a good feeling. I had a good feeling about this speaking test, but I was, I, I but you could tell that like with every speaking test with, with IELTS in general, I, I, I'm sure you could agree. Like, it never go in, in, in like in the way you expect. Like like you you could expect one thing. Like you could you could say, all right, so my speaking went well, really well. So you could expect like really high because the the the, the thing is, there were times I was like I was telling myself and like it was a couple of years ago, I I would do the test, I, I would come out and then I would say, all right, so if if I get like eight point five for this performance, like. I'm going to apply for a in an UR. So I would like, and then the result would come out and I would score 7.5. And then like, I would actually request an UR hoping to get an 8.5. So like there, again, the, the thing is, I, in this case is karma, I think, right? So, uh, so you have to be really careful with your words. So I was really uh, hesitant about, uh, I was really trying to calm myself down, put, put myself like, you know, in, in, in a place that I wasn't really expecting anything. But I, so I just went out to the, I went to the uh, main test and then uh, 
uh, listening and reading went really well. Uh, then I had this uh, prompt solution question for part two. It was, uh, it was a, I think it was about students uh, not doing really, um, what was the question? Where many students uh, find it harder to study at the university or college uh, than when they were at school. What are the reasons and what can be done? So uh, it, it, it was a very, you know, with a BC, when I scored 8.5, that was a question about scientific research. So this question was refreshing in a way. It was, it was easier to handle, so to speak. Uh, so I, I, was, I had this expectation of, you know, I could have gotten a nine, but it, it never happens. Like, it never happened before. You always get this exp like expectation, but there, there's always something that just goes wrong, right? Like... And it, it, it, and it could have happened on that day. It could have happened. I could have gotten 8.5 for speaking. I could have gotten uh, 7.5 for writing. I could have uh, screwed up the, screwed up the uh, listening or the, uh, the reading part. Anything, like, anything could have gone wrong. So what I'm trying to say is when you take, take the test, like this is for maybe future can candidates who are trying to get a, a decent score, it's, it's not so much about the score itself. Like, the score is just a number. It doesn't really, you know, show what level you're at. Like, it just, it's just a number, and it's, it, it could fluctuate. It could really change from one exam to another. Like, it's... Um, so, uh, the, this getting 8.5 and 9 is so close... Like this, this experience could be so close that like this perception of the examiner could change everything. Like how they perceive you. Like when you do your speaking, for example, in your experience, how that particular examiner saw your speaking performance and gave you that particular score. So it's, so, it's just a matter of perception. It's just a matter of like how they see you, right? So... Um, so what I'm trying to say, like everything has to go your way to get that nine. And I think in both of our cases, it did. Unfortunately for you, it had to take additional um, reassessment of your speaking, unfortunately for you. Although again, I'm really sure that uh, this speaking score was probably bad nine. Uh, but it just had to come from that EOR. It just had to, like, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to reflect on, like, and the way that it happens is really crazy because this is, like, me getting my score, like, from the exam on the same day that you would receive your EOR outcome. Like, this is just crazy. And I think it it does mean something. It does mean, like, at the end of the day, I think it does mean something. I think it just speaks to the, um, like the whole uh, experience thing, like this uh, stamina, this energy, this new uh, fresh blood versus this old guy with some experience. So that's all. And so it's just like coming together on the same day, both of us achieving this result on the same day probably means something. Probably like it just tells the whole, the whole maybe Uzbekistan, like then the, all the IELTS candidates that you you can achieve. Like it doesn't really matter how old you are. It doesn't really matter how how much experience you have. It doesn't really matter um, what kind of exposure you have to language. For example, I know that you've never left the country, right? No, I was in the U.S. for a couple of couple of months. Back in summer work and travel yeah, program. Yeah, so travel it, program. It doesn't really count as like it's. It, I wouldn't really, you know, say that you're, you've improved your language skills through that program because I actually spent. Uh, I, how, how many times did you do that? Like just well, once? only once back in only, again, 2019. So the same with me. So. It's, it's not the reason that you've, you've developed this, you've achieved this competency in speaking or on, on general English as well. So uh, you coming from this experience, basically learning the language on your own through exposure, uh, probably, um, I'm not, probably, I don't know, like, well, what's your, what, what, what do you watch on YouTube? Like, it just, so, yeah. 
Uh, can I follow up on sure. lot, some of the points you made there? So you shared, you brought a lot of clarity here. And so I'd like to start with the first point you made, which is generation, you know, gap difference. Like the one of the first points you made, you said that when you're, you know, in this era, like you have so much access, opportunities, and I totally agree with that point. Because like uh, back in 2014, thir- yeah, like 13, when I started learning this language, I, I had to use a book to look up words. Right. But now you can go online and look up anything you want and you can literally educate yourself at no cost. Like, I don't think you had that privilege around the time when you started, you know, exactly. learning this yeah. language. So, so I, what I'm trying to say is such a massive advantage a lot of young people take for, take for granted. Yeah. So, but, but, but again, it wouldn't take away anything, anything from, from what you achieved. Uh, from, you know, I'm, I'm, I was just trying to make the point that um, I was just a spe- special day that this uh, representatives of two different generations coming together yeah. and getting that result on the same day, it just shows that this is possible. It yes. could be achievable, whether you are you have this experience or not, whether you're young and again, with all this stamina and energy. And yeah, yeah. So that's, that's I guess that, that was my point. And um, I... I got to give it to you. It's no easy job managing all this, you know, with a family and a, and you got a, you know, job, you, you run your own school. But with me, uh, like I have no distractions in my life. I, I've said no to my, you know, friends, my family. And they, every time they ask me like, why aren't you showing up to this party? Why aren't you there for us? Why aren't you spending family time? And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I love you all, but I got something going for me right now. And it means a lot yeah. to me. So, but I, I don't think you can really say that at a certain it, age. Yeah, when at, you at, got a, yeah kids. at a certain age, you have to take yeah. responsibility. But yeah. again, I'm not trying to say, you know, I, I was, you know, juggling all these balls. Uh, but it's it's about uh, it's about like uh, how, what kind of perspective you have, right? Like, so it, whatever you achieved is a great again for for what you have, and whatever I achieved, I achieved is great for what I have. So it's just this happening on the same day is just it's uh, incredibly I actually, crazy. I yeah. actually got a little theory. I know it sounds like a joke, but I think it goes to show we live in a simulation or something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> ever heard this simulation theory? Yeah. yeah. Like uh, people might so- think, someone, yeah, yeah, yeah. People might think I'm crazy, but it's this whole thing is one in a billion scenario and it happened. Yeah. It, yeah. I, it's it, kind it, it of, taught me a life lesson, you know? Um, because I I wanted to have this success. I wanted to achieve this band nine. Um, I wasn't, you know, I, I had that. It, you you would never think that this was gonna happen, right? Like on on this day, this another thing coming up. But again, like as as you point out, it's just uh, it's it's crazy the way it happened. But I think it just it it just shows that you have to be humble and you can't be really um you can't be really taking all the credit and you can't be saying like i'm the only person like it just shows okay so there there are other people as well that who who've been trying and yeah i'm i'm i'm just happy and relieved that uh, it was someone who truly deserves this. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Again, yeah. I th- I'm really flattered. I don't know how to respond to that, but I think you probably deserve it more than anyone else because you've you've spent better part of your life trying um, to yeah, you know make yeah. it work, but, and uh, it takes a lot of dedication and commitment. And like you said, it's you know I think it's no easy job, you know, coming all the way and you know pow- powering your way through all the difficulties and the challenges. I can only imagine how difficult it is to be an adult and, you know, have kids and a job and, and, and this massive, you know, city, like where I live, it's a small hometown. My, my hometown is a small city and there aren't many distractions around. So you can really pull your thoughts together and focus on one thing. But And I was you, like, yeah, like, uh, yeah, it's okay. uh, to, to, to have that experience, like, you're trying to get this score and you you would think it would, it would be it would be over right like you you get this nine i never thought like i i 
I thought about getting nine, but I never thought I would have that feeling, you know, this, this feeling of, okay, so I got it. But this, there's this guy now. <laughs> Again, no offense. Now, now what's, what's next, right? Like, what's going to happen now? Like, is, is he going to try and take the test? And obviously you can, given your, again, the opportunities and the w whatever you want to do, you want to achieve, uh, you want to prove that, you know. Uh, and it's, it's okay, you're, you're hungry for this. And it's great. And I, I feel the same way. So you want to take IELTS again the, and I'm again? Not, I'm not making any statements here, but uh, the, the point is, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. And the way it happened is like, I thought when I finally break through and get that band nine, I thought I was going to take a long break from taking the test and I would be relieved and I would be just waiting for someone else to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> it, just took, yeah. it just took like a, three, four uh, hours. <laughs> hours like literally to just to show like okay now i'm here what's next let's let's let's continue the race but again i don't want to do it but uh so what are your plans is it like do you want to get all four nines or no no, no. I'm, i'm like I'm, i'm too old for that like i don't i don't think i i i, I will I'm, i'm you know grateful that i've achieved band nines and i'm happy to pass the torch to this young man and just say, you're the, you're the next guy, you're the future of uh, IELTS, um, you know, IELTS instructors. And, yeah. okay. What are your plans? Do you want to take IELTS uh, again again? With me, uh, if I'm ever, you know, retaking the test, uh, it's, it's all about, um, you know, maintenance, I guess. Like uh, from, you know, moving forward, it's all going to be being on the maintenance mode and, uh, you know, possibly setting myself more ambitious goals Because, yeah. uh, you know, it brings me back to my earlier point, which is once you conquer one mountain, there's another one waiting. So you just, you know, keep going. So, and it's it's really nice to be, you know, in an environment and meeting people who shared, have shared the same experience, who've had the same experiences. And, and, and I feel like I still have, you know, a lot to learn from you as well. And experience wise, you know, I might, I might have done a decent job of learning this language, but transferring this skill and knowledge to other people, that's a whole different story. It takes years of, you know, trial and error and learning from your past mistakes. So, and, and so it, it, a lot of it comes down to this experience and maturity thing, which I am, uh, and, and it takes a lot of patience and willingness to learn from other people and be willing to sort of set aside your ego. So, and, and, and I learned like the ego often gets in the way when you say like, I want to be the first or I, I want to have it all to myself, but okay, once you have it, what are you going to do with it? If you don't have anyone to share it with, right? So it's something I had to learn the hard way and, and I'm, gr I'm blessed. I'm grateful to have had friends and mentors, you know, over the past few years. And one of which is, one of who is uh, my, my, my old dear friend, Alicia. He, you know, I'm sure you guys know who this guy is and he's been always by my side and helping me and guiding me. And I, and I think if it weren't for this guy, I wouldn't be here right now. So buddy, if you're watching this, thanks a lot from the bottom of my heart. And there have been, you know, Uh, you know, I think countless other people have helped me come all the way here. And, and so, like I said, one mission is accomplished, move on to the next one. And I, I don't actually like this whole idea of celebrating because, you know, to a lot of people, it might look like a big deal, but there are guys out there who are building rockets, sending people to Mars. And there are, there are people who are defending our country and there are people out there doing jobs that, in, that involve, require uh, far more risk and responsibility and patience. And, and, and me here just taking a test, standard te standardized test a couple of times and getting nine and calling myself uh, a successful guy. No, no way. Okay. It's, so I, I feel really bad about it. I sometimes feel like a failure because I got some peers, you know, people my age, I see, I follow on social media who are, who are, who, who, who have come so far, so, so far, so, so who've done, who've accomplished so much in life and their stories Uh, are worth sharing than mine, more worth sharing than mine. Their stories should be told, I think. And so uh, what I'm trying to do next is probably like, 
you know, keep craft, keep improving my craft and uh, trying to look for ways to get better at, I think, transferring these skills I've amassed, I've, I've accumulated over the years to other people, like the, you know, s s staff we got and all the people who've put our faith in us. And, and, and, and I also really want to thank all the students who show up to our class every day because the system we got at our school, it's pretty rigorous and intensive and you get to show up every day of the week, including on Sundays. I was going to ask this which question. Which is yeah, crazy, yeah. I mean. <laughs> and, and that's actually part of the reason why I wanted to get in that because you got to give people something special to expect them to show up to your class every day, mm, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I, I don't want to look in their eyes and say, oh, Okay, uh, this is uh, how much work it's going to take, uh, and and to get to your goals, you know, to reach your goals, if I haven't done it myself. Yeah. So it was like a, a my way of, you know, you know, telling people that hard work always, you know, pays off if you're, you know, committed and if you keep going. And you know, there are there's. I know there's more to life than just working, but uh, but I think if you just you know make it your passion, I don't see any reason why you can't you know uh, reach your goals, whatever whatever they are. Yes. So and and again, it's it I think sort of brings us back to our inspiration point, like inspiring other people. I'm not sure if I deserve that title. I just. You know, every time I look into my students' eyes, I just want to be able to tell them that you can do that, you can do this, and here's proof. Right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, I, I don't want to just give them some empty words and say, uh, you know, I, I want to, I want to co come it to come it from someone they can relate to. Okay, this guy is from this town. It's a credible source. It's just yeah, yeah credibility. Uh, right. It's, yeah. Really. So this guy is from this town, and he's had the same experience. Like he's, uh, he's. He's had the same privileges as I do. So if he could do it, why can't I? And that's the, you know, the idea narrative I'm trying to create on, you know, social media and among people. So yeah, it's, it's uh, so to put it in one word, trying to lead by example. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah. And yeah. here, that's, another idea. Both of you took CDI, CDI, I mean, computer-based IELTS, and you took the test in your hometown, like in Bukhara, and you took the test in Tashkent. And here... Uh, a lot of students and candidates uh, have different ideas that uh, if they take the test in Tashkent, they get high, higher score. And can you share your experience with the real experience? And it, it, is, it is a very good suggestion to students who are like um, taking paper-based or city aisles or in their region or in Tashkent. I'm really glad you asked that question. And this is something we should, you know, totally bring up in this conversation. So... I think you should take the test where you live in your locality. Don't make trips. Don't make trips. It just makes the whole experience frustrating and and just it's it's a lot of hassle. So I'm not saying it because I don't like traveling. I know that it takes its toll on your body and and and then you need some time to acclimatize and you, you need some time to get back in game. And, and so if you want to, you know, if you don't want to get knocked off this flow state, like where everything is going great, then I suggest you do it in a familiar surrounding in your own, when you're in your, in your own element. So... And like for that reason, uh, I haven't taken a test in Tashkent in a long time because I don't think I can get a nine in the city. Like uh, uh, probably I am, uh, I'm, I might, I'm not sure if I can do that, but I know that, uh, like I said at the beginning of this show podcast, like there are these components to sitting an exam and it's not it doesn't just apply to sitting an exam it really applies to anything a concentration focus intensive there are all these different aspects you got to try to manage so like physical mental and then the technical aspect so and like you were saying as odds are get odds should be stacked in your favor if you want the best score if you are after a nine so, but with me, it was, I figured I need to sort of re-engineer my entire life. Right. So like my environment in, I really, I can really, I, I totally agree with the 
point you made about me learning more English here than I did in the U.S. So my experience in the U.S. helped me build some confidence because I, you know, I was talking to people. I and they would compliments on your English, bro. No, not exactly. They were like, "Where are you from?" They were just trying to be nice, not trying to offend you. Or it's just, a, you know, prior to that, I only saw them in movies. Yeah, and when you see them in real life, and you realize they're as much human as you are, so it, there, there's not that much. Yeah, of what, a, what state were you in? I was in North Carolina. I was on a little island called Outer Banks, working at a restaurant. Okay. So I had like multiple jobs, and and and I think my experience in the U.S. taught me a lot of useful things as well, like work ethics. Like people there appreciated when you you know work hard, show show up to work mm, on time. Yeah, and yeah. no, I don't get to say show up to work on time because I'm the least punctual person ever. Because I know my students are out there and laughing at this point. Teachers, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I think I learned more English here than I did in the U.S. So and I owed a lot of it to having re-engineered my you know life so like with me uh this one habit i've been doing religiously for the past two years is listening to english content uh, in the morning and, you know not not just like as soon as i wake up but while i'm making breakfast and this really i think helps you know stimulate language learning circuit of your brain so and It's something, and, and, and a very important point is don't watch stuff. Listen, listen. Like even if it's a podcast, even it's, if it's a show, try to visualize it. Engages more of your neurons, and it helps you not just you know build this language skill, but also you know ability to think for yourself. You know creatively imagine things. Like uh, back back in the day when people didn't have TV, they had they listened to the radio. And they probably were more creative than we are now. And this this whole social media thing and short videos have really stifled, I think, stunned people's, people's young people's uh, creativity skills and their critical thinking and their attention span and all that. So, yeah. So the listening to English content every morning and past two, two three years, I don't really know when I got into this habit, but I've been doing it for quite some time now. And without a break, without a fail, Like I, I don't think I can really show up to work if I don't get this morning stimulation, and uh, and, and and then I have this strict code of not ever speaking uh, Uzbek, Tajik, Russian when I'm at work. I can actually speak these la these languages, but not as fluently as I do English. It's just when you're born in a you know linguistically diverse area, mm -hmm. such such, such as, as where place, I come from, yeah, Bukhara. Yeah. My parents, you know, my mom speaks T Tajik and my dad speaks Uzbek. And at school, you get taught Uzbek and a little bit of Russian and then a little bit of English and you get all confused. Right. Or like, and, and then you develop something called like stutter. You start stuttering. Like if you ever hear me stuttering, it's because your brain is trying to figure out what is it you're doing. Right. You're like you're well, shocking. What language you're yeah. speaking. So yes. I, I figured uh, right then and there that I had to pick one and stick to it. And, so, and when that happened? Uh, I think it happened when I started teaching English back teaching English back in 2018, 19, I guess, 19. So, and, and and back then I wasn't serious about it. I got serious about this probably after I graduated university because I was uh, working at this uh, school, Millennium, where you know my my teachers work, and and. And I figured for students to do exceptionally well in their exam, to get the results they want, they need environment. And it was my job to give them that. Yeah. So it started with me, you know, pushing myself to speak English at all times. There were times I would, you know, get frustrated because I didn't know the word. So it's a it language happens. barrier. It, it like, happens, I think I yeah. still have it. Yeah, no, no, no, I don't, I don't think so. But you've really come along, like... Um, And what, what language were you speaking like mainly before you started learning English? Uh, it really depended on the person. So if it's my friend, it's Tajik. And if it's my university friends, it's, it's, it's mostly English because they, they, they spoke but Russian. Before you, you started learning um, English though? Before I started learning. It, it depended on my parents. So if it's my mom, it's Tajik. It's my dad, it's Uzbek. So what would you consider as your first language? Because it's, it's kind of, it was yeah, interesting yeah, totally to me. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's Tajik. I'm It's more Tajik, fluent yeah. in Tajik than I'm in Uzbek. Oh, okay. 
Okay. So, okay. And, and for that reason, I would I asked him if we could have this interview in English because I, I don't want people to think I'm some idiot because <laughs> no, I know yeah. I can't put words together and because and lately I've been getting uh, offers like can we have you on the show on podcast and like okay can you have it in English then yeah. because I can't speak much Uzbek. Uh-huh. Not that I don't like this language. It's just I haven't uh, you know put in the hours you need. Sure. Yeah. yeah. When, when I hear you speaking Uzbek, I'm like God. This guy is. Bad nine Uzbek speaker like <laughs> speaks bad nine in Uzbek when he's on the phone it's not. and he's because it, it's so sharp, crisp, yeah. great pronunciation. Yeah, and, yeah and in Uzbek, saw, right? In Uzbek, and I saw the envy envied him for that. And you and were I, scoring yeah, <laughs> as an example. I was like a fluency nine point six lexical resource. Uh, anyway, it was off the scale. So yeah, you passed the exam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like this. Anyway, b- back to my point, like creating this environment, and and also uh, something else I really want to talk about on today's show is having you know personal qualities. Like a lot of people, when it comes to learning, and I'm, it's not just language learning. I think it applies to any uh, any you know sort of endeavor, especially learning. You. It's a it's a really it's it's a really close minded approach thinking when you say it's as simple as just picking up a textbook and memorizing a bunch of words and or or some theories and facts. There is this whole science behind learning which is which doesn't get taught at school, and there are so many different components to it. One of you know which is a te- technical again the points I made earlier. And, and and and the most important part, I think, uh, pr- probably equally important part, is the mind aspect. Uh, and when I say the mind, I have a slightly different interpretation for it. It's your personal qualities, like uh, how much self-reflection you do. What am I learning? Why am I learning? And how how far have I come from you know when I started? And where can I go next? Or who should I look to for advice? And and and <clears throat> there's uh, and, and things like being patient because I know in you know today's culture people want immediate results. Nothing frustrates me more than a student who comes and tells me why am I not getting thirty plus who's just started their language learning journey. And I'm like, and, and, and, I, and I go like, and I, had to, and I have to lecture them all over again. Okay, listen, something you got to understand is language learning, something takes time and it's like a muscle. If you're not constantly training it, you lose it. Like if you guys are ever, you know, if you're into bodybuilding, which is something I've lately been doing, uh, so you... Don't hit the gym for a couple of weeks. You're you're back to being obese. You're back to being so, out of shape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you need discipline for that, and and and and there's also a human factor. It's it's not like one variable equation. Something you got to understand is things. Uh, I wish things were that simple, but they're not. So. And and trying to explain all this, it takes a lot of time. So, and again, so as a language learner, what I suggest you do is, don't give yourself six months. You can't get a seven and so you, you can't get a seven and six months unless, like, you are, you know, constantly doing it and you have the right, uh, you know, teachers and you have the you you're following the right program. Give yourself uh, years, like or. You say to yourself, okay, if I'm a beginner, if I'm if I if I'm at this le- level right now, I I'm gonna get it probably in a couple of years, get to that level. Like, how do you really expect yourself to get to our level if you haven't put decades of work, right? So p- this hurry, you know, sickness, this instant you know, want everything to be done instantly. The sort of culture is really bad. So you gotta learn to be patient. Because, like I said, like good things take time to build. So, the self reflections, a reflection, and patience. And there's uh, another important, I think, aspect which is you know critical thinking, uh, which is quite similar to self reflection. Constantly asking questions, and and with a lot of students, they they they are insecure. They don't wanna they don't wanna come across stupid in the class. They don't wanna they don't want their peers or teacher think that they're dumb, but there's nothing really wrong with asking a question. Like uh, I, so like, I think when I was a teenager, I wasn't taught all these things. I I had to figure them out, you know, 
or the hard way. So that's what I meant by re-engineer my entire life. So I started doing my own research online on how to learn, how to become a student, a good one. So, so it's, it's not just the language aspect. I think I can, I got it figured. I think I can teach you how to speak, but, uh, but I, I need to do something in the way of helping you maintain that, you know, not just for your exam. Now, after you're done with your exam and mo moving on to the next thing, I want you to, to get to keep this thing so into your future life. So, and so, yeah, constant exposure is a big deal, your environment and, and, and also the, you know, state you're in, your mindset. So what I, what I think uh, when, when it comes to IELTS, something you got to understand is this test is meant for adults, not for teenagers. So this is something else a lot of parents don't get. So, you know, when they see a kid get 8.5 in IELTS, six, 16, 17 year old, they think my kid can do the same possibly but something you gotta understand is that kid is like one in a million. Yeah, yeah. that kid uh, was has probably been learning this language since he was six, seven. Yeah. Like that case, like he's sixteen now, so it's been ten years. Seven. So it's not a surprise he got an eight or eight point five. So, and but you bring your kid to me, and he's only uh, been learning it for about a year or half a year, and say, okay, in the next four months, I need an eight. <laughs> uh, I'm like, yeah, give me a minute, like give me a break. I I'm not sure how to. I'm, I, I don't know how to respond to that. So, and so it's about like managing expectations. So, so like people out there, you need to something you got to understand is it's not really about the result you're getting. It's more about the experience, the journey, and the, and the people uh, you interact with, people you learn from, and you know, just trying to be in the moment rather than just rushing to get things done in life. So because you don't get to live this life, you know, twice. There is, there, I don't know if there's a sequel, <laughs> But I guess yeah, there we, isn't. We never know. Right? Yeah, we, <laughs> you never know. You never know. But anyway, but, yeah. I'd like to think that this is the only chance, only shot you get at this. So enjoy the moment. Like, if turn it into a fun activity. So, and if you find it frustrating, then go back and start all over again. So I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. But if you do this right, you're not just gonna get the results you want. You're just gonna, I think, ultimately reach the kind of life you want to live like happiness. So, yeah, and, and be proud of what you've accomplished and realize that you can transfer these skills and knowledge to other people and, and leave a mark behind you. Long after you're gone, people will remember you for who you were and the impact you created in your community. So it's not just about making a fortune or and being instantly popular at a very young age. It's, I think, more about, you know, making sure that you are, you know, you're making sure that you are, you stand for something and you've done, you're, you've, you've lived, lived a good, good life and, and that you've helped people and that, that this whole experience was fun. So I know it got a little philosophical, no, no, but I sorry. think. But, but what was the question yeah, these again? Are, these are <laughs> these are the hard. So he asked me sort of like, when when when I start this whole thing, and then how? You know, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, taking the test in, in the in region a, or traveling to Tokyo <laughs> just yeah. to take the test. Yeah, like, just just because where you live. Yeah, just where you live. Some some of the people asked whether you took the test in Bukhara, and they were already trying to go there to go to Bukhara from another, for example, from Bali or from like Samarkand and go there and take it in Bukhara because you got the nine in that region. Yeah. I just want to uh, get your, get your My ideas. My take on this yeah, issue, no yeah, problem. Yeah. So um, here's the deal, guys. If you think like that, it means you got real, real English problem. You're not confident with your English, like location, is not actually a factor is is is it it pays it makes very very very little difference in your score so what i think you should do is take the test where you live so that when you show up to the test test venue that day you're not anxious you're not in a hurry it's a familiar surrounding 
So, and as for whether it's paper based or CD, I think the answer is pretty simple. If you're if you're f- fluent in typing, then go for CD IELTS because you don't have to transfer the answers. Uh, if you can type fast, you can edit faster. And something I gotta say is, guys, I I want to give IDP some credit, you know, for this whole you know situation. That I mean, nine result, because if it weren't for you guys arranging the CD test in Bukhara, I don't think this would have this would have happened. So I don't think this would ever happen because uh, when I write by hand, I got to do a lot of editing. Sometimes I read my paragraph and it needs a lot of reordering and then you have to scratch everything and redo it, which takes you time. And then there is uh, there is frustration factor you get because you know, you check your clock, your time and you, you're and the clock is ticking, so you get even more frustrated. So with a computer, IELTS is it's way less. It's stress free. Yeah. Like that. That's what I'm trying to say. So it really depends on your, you know, skills. If you're good at typing, then go for CD, CD IELTS. But if you're comfortable writing by hand, old fashioned, then go for paper based. It's okay, a what are other question. insights <laughs> and advices for teachers who are preparing to get nine? <laughs> like we know a lot of uh, tutors who are also like trying to get nines. They're also taking IELTS more frequently now. And uh, can you give some insights, some advices, maybe to them, maybe to other test takers? Yeah, from your own experience. Yeah. What is the secret? <laughs> secret well, sauce. Yeah. The secret is a secret. Secret is a secret. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... If, if I have to speak from experience, I have to say that uh, there is no, you know, secret or magic formula to getting a nine. I think it's just matter of luck. Um, in in this case, because I've already pointed out that it's like it, it all. Everything depends on it. Like everything, all all the chips uh, have to fall, you know, in your in your favor, and all you have to do, like. To, to have this very smooth experience and and then it's not always it always doesn't it, it doesn't always come uh, down to how you perform sometimes like just like his uh, case again so it's it's it's all about perception so I wouldn't really um, if, if I had to you know give advice I think it, a lot a lot of the instructors who've, who've been you know very close tonight they already have this theory they already know that they're close it's all about like um having the advantage of maybe like being lucky in terms of having certain questions having a certain examiner etc etc so the the i think it's there is this psychological or there was there was a psychological barrier so to speak like like it's impossible to get a nine like so in in, in our mindset so in a way what we did was to kind of break down this barrier and saying like it's it's possible. Yeah, hopefully there will, will be many more Niners. There there will be now. I think because very close and I, I know like there are already like probably two or three people who who've probably registered for the test. I'm I'm not really sure. But um Yeah of of course. It's yeah, it's about to happen. It's it's gonna happen. Uh you guys might have waited the whole Uzbekistan to it's, register it's, it's, for it's, it's, it's, that's yeah that's good that's a good thing. So um with, with you guys, right? Probably with the IDP. With the IDP. Well, with yeah, the IDP. They will register. <laughs> but it it uh, what happened was uh, I actually have um, there's there's this guy who works uh, you know at Isle Zone. Uh, he he was really also trying to get nine. So what he did was he's trying to now to get some attention or maybe not not some attention, but uh, he's trying now he's trying to take the test with the BC to get the first nine with the BC. So like maybe some, you know, this, the whole thing might not really work in your favor as well, because yeah. now there is this, you know, opportunity or untapped, so to speak, thing to have that achieve, but, but I wouldn't really worry too much about it because it's not so much about which organization you take the test with, but it's it's about yeah, it's it's the same thing. It's the same thing. No, but he's he's. I think probably what they're trying to do is if there is a person of if there is like you know uh, these instructors are trying to take the test with either with the ID or IDP or BC, with the IDP probably they would do it because now they they realize it's possible to get an nine. With the BC probably they wanna you know, again, get some credit for being the first with the BC. So, uh, but it's the same. It's, it's the same yes, thing. It's the same, the same thing. thing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, again, it's it's all about, um, 
not really uh, fearing the test, I think. It's like, you have to accept that it's just a test. It's no big deal. How many times you got, t- took the test? Uh, when you came to the point when, when you, you do not fear the test? I think, uh, I, that's a good question. That's a good question. I think I took the test. No, I'm, I'm, like, it's not about fearing. I think fearing might not be the right word, but it's about realizing that you could do it, right? So I think I, I came to that realization really um, recently. Like when I, when I got my 8.5 for the first time in writing. It, it, like it ha- because the writing is the biggest hurdle to you know, whatever you could achieve. Like the, the, the, the first time I scored three nines and one 7.5, like back to back was in 2020 and 2021. So even having that score, like you could, you know, you have that, you know, thought like, okay, so I can get three nines, but there's always this 7.5 thing in writing. So, uh, and when I started scoring eight, 8.5 in writing, uh, back to back, uh, I, I started realizing that it's this, this, this is achievable. So probably it happened quite recently and th- this past summer, this past summer. And then how many times I took the test before like uh, realizing that was probably about more than 20. More than 20. Yeah, because f- if, you, if you, you know, count all the tests that I've taken from, from 2006 to uh, 2021, uh, because I realized this then uh, into 2022. So that would be about 20, 20 tests, I think. But it was, it's, it's again, like it's spread out throughout the years. It's right. Like I was taking the test maybe three times three a year. Three or four yeah. times a year yeah. f- for a continuous period of time. Have so, you ever calculated how much money you have spent for IELTS test <laughs> and uh, remark and so on? No, that so was on. one of the questions, I think. Like in, in the comments, say, like, how in, much in money you invested to get nine? <laughs> Let's say. How much money I, I spent getting nine, right? Yeah. I, I wouldn't really because but we we have free uh, you know exams with with both of these organizations so uh, it's not so much about spending money but uh, it's it's about uh, I like w- when you're in this profession you're teaching as Hesse pointed out like you want to make it happen and you want to convince your students and as well as maybe other instructors that. Uh, what you're saying is credible. Like uh, when you take the test, it's it's all about credibility. Like you have to prove your students that uh, your approach to writing works because there are a lot of, you know, questions about whether uh, like um, we should, I don't know, use uh, a certain structure to get a decent writing score. Or templates. Not. And, and yeah, yeah. some templates, some formula. So, I've, and I, I've been saying that to, to students and to every to, to everyone who, who you know who watch me or who, who follow me that I I feel like when it comes to you know getting that high score in IELTS it's all about your general English like how, how much exposure you've had to the language and how you know what kind of tools you've had and how uh, for example how well you can communicate in this language both you know. Uh, in, in, in a spoken and, and written format. Uh, so yeah, taking the test over and over wasn't really, I wasn't really after nine at that, like when, when I was taking the test back in 2017, 18, it, it wasn't like band nine, band nine wasn't really my you know goal. I, I knew that it was unrealistic. It was about, first of all, uh, seeing how the, the, the nature of the questions change, like, because there were rumors, if, if you remember back, back in the day, that like, if you take the test like in spring or summer, it's more challenging than to take the test in, in winter or fall. So, so I was trying to show students that uh, it's all the same experience. It's just about uh, how you perform on a, on, a, on a particular test day, right? Uh, it's not so much about like, when you take the test, it's about how, like, whether you're in your elements, whether you're uh, ready for the test. So, um, so to, like, to take the test repeatedly uh, now, like, I, I started, you know, I when I start feeling that I, I that that band nine was closed, that, that that's when I felt um, uh, that I I should be taking the test more frequently because I knew that it was just a matter of luck. It was just a it's just like, you just have to have a very lucky day to get a nine. So my advice to, you know, 
future Niners, let's say, right? Take more IELTS <laughs> with IDP IELTS. <laughs> Not to take it more, but um, here, here's, here are the two approaches that I took. Like in the year 2022, I was taking it back to back without really practicing a lot. In 2023, I start taking some breaks, like, because you live in Bukhara and, and, and you don't really get to have many CDI tests in Bukhara, right? It's only like, what? Once, two, once a month or twice a month. Right, right. so yeah. it's, you, you're kind of lucky in that way because you don't have that urge, right? But living in Tashkent, you know, having that availability of, you know, you could take the test at, at any day you want, it's just there is this uh, urge of, you know, retaking the test when these things don't go your way. Like, you come out of the test like, oh man, I had this awful writing question or I had this awful speaking test. Let me just register for another day. I could do it. Like, I, right? So, and then something else goes wrong. You're listening or you're, in your, in your case, you're reading, right? So, but and that was my strategy in 2022. But in 2023, I changed that slightly. I start taking breaks between tests. Like I would take just one test, have some practice, reflect, like after getting my result, reflect on that result. And then, you know, like the, I think the only thing that was kind of keeping both of us from getting nine was probably the writing score. So I was trying to, you know, like just keep improving. And what I realized uh, this like, w when you do that, like at home, when you practice writing, even, you know, under exam conditions, you set your time constraints and you practice, uh, you, you, you get to finish, you get to finish, you still have like 10, 15 minutes to edit. But w w when I take the test, like I realized like just time probably runs faster in, in the test or there, there's this probably added pressure. So, um, I, I always find myself struggling with, you know, finishing. Like there were a couple of times I couldn't really finish my task one or task two. Uh, so th that, that's one of the reasons for, for these breaks so that I could work on my time management specifically in the writing section. So my advice, like what worked for me is this particular strategy to take the test, uh, uh, you know, see the result, and then, yeah, Put some time in, put some preparation in. It could be about a week. It could be about 10 days. Work on your problems and then retake it. Now I think it's easier because there's no rush. It's not like you're trying to be the first one, right? Even the there's second no one. rush. You can take it easy. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really matter. Like you can take your time, right? And then enjoy the process. The, the the the whole thing is now like you're you're this stress free. Okay, you know? some techniques techniques how you prepared for test. For example, you said that you need like you've taken the I, breaks. I was, I was focusing on my writing skills. I think that was one of the uh, things that really changed the dynamic. Like uh, it it had to you know happen. I was too arrogant probably previous in previous years, like thinking that I could probably get a decent score in writing without really practicing much. And it's, uh, it's those moments, like when you see these guys practicing every day, crafting so their writing practicing. skills. Yeah. And then you get to realize, oh, hold on a second. Maybe I should do that too, right? Maybe I should probably, because, and then it's, it's about probably being humble and it's about like, okay, so uh, accepting that this, this, this applies to students as well. You have to accept this particular score that you have, right? And I always say it like, because when you uh, get, a, a, get a lower score, the terminology is, they gave me this score. Like in Uzbek, it actually like, birishte, mange mange koyde, mange But right? when they so get seven? When they get seven or 7.5, it's like, get I got it. Mange to all them. Yeah, so it's about mindset. It's about mindset. And we have the same, it's the same problem probably. I had the same, I, I wouldn't speak for you, for you, but I had the same problem. Like when I score seven or 7.5 for writing, it's like, mindset. You just have to change that mindset and accept that, okay, so for this particular writing, you're just at a band 7, 7.5 level. Yeah. You just have to accept it and work. And it takes a lot of 
you know, uh, you have to swallow your pride and you have to say, look, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm a band 7, 7.5. Now I just, maybe with this particular topic, so I started writing uh, on different topics. I started yeah, covering different maybe topics. Maybe you, like, this performance deserves this particular question. question. Yeah, yeah like question when you get a particular question, you probably can get score. a seven. Uh, you, with partic- another uh, topic, you can get an eight, 8.5. So it's, it's just a matter of how comfortable you are, how confident you are expressing your thoughts and how, how you know, how, um, uh, I, I, how many ideas you have or how um, this, what would you call like nuanced ideas you have about particular topics. So my suggestion is you never know what kind of question you're, you're going to get in your exam. We're all human so for beings, those future yeah. nine, niners, I would say be ready for any question and to be ready for any, you know, writing or speaking question, you just need to be prepared. You just need to have some practice. Is there any plans right. for you starting in a course for Niners? We any, could do that together any, probably. Any special course maybe. We, we could do that probably and, and, and we could probably charge it uh, you know, at, the, at, the, at a premium cost like um, which I think you are not really used to but in Tashkent that's what we do right like we have these uh, different classes like when you're trying to teach someone at a higher level and you know that they're ready to pay because it's it's it's worth money. Because if you're a- aiming for a nine, you have to be ready to pay the price, right? Man, again, I'm joking, but the, the the whole yeah, the whole it could you know be when, a when, reality. When, when should should we wait? We for could this do it release? here probably. We could do it like and on, and in this venue, so you could also get some money as well, right? You could you get you get, you could get to get uh, you get to have some share as well, but. But but yeah, but to be you know uh, more serious on a, on a more serious note, I have to say that like it's uh, it's about not really fearing. Now that the psychological ba- ba- barrier is down, like it's it's all about uh, practicing and being humble, and which I think uh, is something that's possible now. Like okay, so uh, all I have to do is. Uh, be be just ready for this test, right? Like uh, practice different questions and uh, take the test, and then not not not overthink it. I would say not overthink it. Then don't really uh, have this like you know, um, uh, you you don't really have to have these expectations. Uh, when you're taking the test, if you have these expectations, it's just there's too much pressure. So you just have to be like pressure free. Like you don't really have to think about the exam and the upcoming results. So just take the test uh, and not really thinking about a potential score or not even thinking about you might get a, you know, nine. Because usually what, you know, based on my experience, I could say that like, that you cannot really predict the score, even after taking the test. You you get to have this feeling. You you you can sense that you did well, but you cannot really predict. There's always something unexpected, right? So it's all about enjoying the test without really thinking too much about it, like worry-free way, right? Like, so just have to enjoy the test, enjoy the process, and hopefully it'll happen. And yeah. your suggestions. Uh, I and advice. Yeah, I'm just gonna try to make some extra points. So <clears throat> I'd say, I'd say, yeah, I can, I would totally agree with your point on that. Not having any, you know, expectations takes the, you know, pressure off and it's, it's, it, it's the, you know, psychological aspect of, you know, taking the test. So you don't want any stress. So the thing, what I've realized over the, you know, past couple of months is, the test is not actually difficult. Yeah, it's not. The, yeah. The, the real, if you were to do it outside that venue. It is easy when you get nine <laughs> to say it like this. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Here's the thing. So what I realized is that as I started doing more in the way of psyching myself up, getting ready. So like, okay, so you need to stay extra calm and you try not to get ahead of yourself and, you know, no expectations and... So it just got easier. I'd come in with a straight head. You just yeah. can focus on the question. So if you were to do the test outside the test venue, you'd probably get a point better. Like 
if not more. So in that sense, I think you got to learn how to, how to manage stress, how to bring your cortisol levels down, which is something I talked about in my reflection post in the past. So, and stress management. So you, uh, you don't need people that day cheering for you. Yes. You want to show up to the test venue alone. Yeah, possibly wearing a hoodie, right? You yeah. don't want much attention. You just want to go in there and have the most casual day ever. Yeah, yeah not think of it as a special day. <laughs> yeah, so like don't, you got to stop telling yourself like I'm getting a nine this time or I'm getting an 8.5. I'm just going to go in, like you said, no expectations, do my best. And I'll just make my peace with the results. Yeah. If I, so if it's not much of an option, you know, if you're not after a nine, if, you know, if you want to just settle for an 8.5, uh, listen, like uh, once you get to eight or above level, you're pretty close to native level. So it's, it's, but, but if you just want to be an exceptionally good at this language, then you just got to give it some time. And don't do things like when you watch content online or do, you know, anything English related, don't do it, you know, as an end in itself. Enjoy the process like this. So like, I think we share the same philosophy, yeah, same I approach. Think, I think like, so too. I think yeah, so too. Yeah. yeah. yeah. So, and, and you don't actually need that nine to be happy. You don't. You don't. Like, <laughs> you don't. You take, don't. take it from us, right? Like, yeah. It's, it's not the feeling that I was expecting and probably you share the same thing for probably different reasons. We both have this for different reasons. We have this feeling, but we probably have very similar feeling now, now nowadays. If, if anything, it, it, it puts more responsibility on you. Because, exactly. You know, I always yeah. remind myself uh, this quote I learned from Spider-Man movie. Anyone watches Marvel movies? It says with, like Uncle Ben says, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> and in and and those days, I'm rushing. I do badly. So you need to learn to think coherently. And the way you do that is by, by you know, you need to cut down on social media and you got to start listening to intellectuals and people who can help you think like them. So you got to stop watching dumb content online. <laughs> so those, all those jokes and funny videos you watch. So not helping, you know, pick up reading a book. It might help and, you know, get comfortable doing boring things that helps you develop concentration, long attention span. I think a lot of the reasons like why, why people make like mistakes, simple ones, uh, they're, they're not just being, you know, attentive enough, attentive attention. So thing, so try to block out distractions, try to cut them out of your life. So, and, and, in that sense, like I, I, th this is actually how I, I think I have come, you know, this far, I'm trying to carefully curate my reality, moderate, like what I'm giving, what I'm feeding my brain. So it's not useful. I can't have it. I can't watch it. Like people get frustrated. Like now I'm not a principled man. I'm just trying to, you know, be smart about the situation. So uh, too much content is bad. So yeah, coherent thinking, listen to intellectuals, read books, and try to explain complex thoughts in simple terms. Like if you can break down something complex in simple words, then you got this. So this is how you can judge if someone is competent. If they make something seem difficult, they don't quite understand it yet. But if a teacher comes in to you and tells you, okay, it's as simple as that. Do this, do that, connect the dots, you'll get what you want. It means they're, they know what they're saying. They know what they, you're saying. They, they got a clue they, they, what they're they saying. What you're doing. They, they know yeah. what they're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, learn to break down complex thoughts in simple terms. It's not going to be easy for that. You're going to do your research and probably discussions and reach out to people who can help. Right. And, and one last point, like uh, before we, you know, I think we're about to wrap this up, aren't we? So before we wrap this up, you know, when you, when you sign up for a program, you know, start taking classes, don't think of your teacher as the solution to your English problem. Your teacher is only, you know, a piece of the puzzle. And this is what I'm constantly telling students. Listen, just because you're taking my classes doesn't mean you're getting an eight or seven. 
I'm, I'm only doing like 10% of the job. You have all these other pieces you need to figure out. So, and, and so from day one, I need to set this tone. So, and, and, and a lot of people don't get it. They're like constantly say, if I just show up, learn this stuff and tell what my teacher, it does what my teacher is telling me, then problem solved. No, you have no clue, buddy. There are so many other piss, pieces you're you know missing in this puzzle so yeah uh, think of your teacher this is what i'm constantly telling my students i'm just a tool i'm not the answer to your problem uh, it's, I'm, I'm like this bottle you need this bottle to you know carry water but you don't actually need the bottle you need the water inside so you know when you go to your teacher your teacher is not the answer it can give you some directions and guidance as to where to go next and how to go go about a situation but ultimately it comes down to your effort and like your approach like and your your what you're trying to gain from this experience so and and and, and for that reason i think this whole public needs to be re-educated on learning matters on how to learn, how to become a good student. So, so this advice I'm sharing is not just for someone no, who's teacher, after yeah, a nine, yeah. but for students in general. So yeah, I've, I've said my piece. Is there anything you want to say at the end of the podcast? My next goal is to, you know, to, to end this thing. Next goal is to have this, um, instead of like, um, you just need to have more, but, be able to transfer transfer this knowledge to on a on a bigger kind of scale to more students. So it wasn't the question when you asked the question about like future Niners. It's it's not it's not my really concern at this point. I think it's we need to try to help the masses. Uh, when I say like the average student, in a way, and uh, making this uh, experience and knowledge. And I'm really happy that we share the same feelings about you know teachers' role. And we should have had this podcast uh, a long time ago, a uh, long time ago, because this would be, you know, it's we're, we're so much in sync in terms of like uh, concepts of, you know, teaching and being um, there for your students, but at the same time, not really taking the full responsibility for them, right? Um, not really guaranteeing results, so to speak, or not really giving them um, like, spoon feeding them, so to speak. Uh, so from that perspective, we kind of share the same feelings. So I hopefully, uh, from now on, my uh, goal is going to, now like now that I've proved that, you know, Band 9 is possible or that I've achieved this level, it's, it's just the, like, uh, it's, it's means to, to this particular end, to this goal. Like, people probably would listen to both of us now. Like even the teachers, you know, they, they start uh, listening and hopefully what we say uh, will, uh, will matter more in a way that, you know, because of this result. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, Ben 9 isn't really something, uh, as he put it, like it's, it's just a sign of credibility so then you, you can now like say things like, okay, this works when, you, when you're, you know, preparing for IELTS and, and this doesn't. And then, you know, both teachers and students will start these things. Uh, you know, it will be easier for them to accept this reality. And so in a way, this is probably my, you know, next hopefully contribution to overall problems yes. in uh, language teaching. Okay. Thank you very much for your time and for your effort to come here and to have this podcast. Uh, we, we, these things we have mentioned and talked, uh, like these are the very interesting for us and hopefully this will be interesting for our, our audience as well. Hop, uh, and the last thing that we have to say is that we have to say is that we have to say is that we have to say is that we have experience then tajibeli dan kelib chiqqan holatda nimali bo'ldi qanaqa bo'ldi juda ham detalni gapirib hammasini gaplashib o'tdi bu narsa odamlarga juda ham qiziq hamma so'rovatdi hamma narvatdi shu mana 3 mart kuni chiqamiz mana juda ham shu hamma joyda tarqalib ketdi umuman hech qatta javob berishga vaqt bo'lmay qoldi menimcha o'ylaymizki bu foydali bo'ldi studentlarga ham va o'qituvchilarga ham IELTS instruktorlarga shu 
qanaqa o'zini tayyorlash kerak o'sha 9 uchun nimalardan nimalarni bosib o'tganingizlar qanaqa qadamli bo'lgan hammasi o'shalar etildi. I bundan tashqari yana bitta yaxshi narsani aytdingiz. Bu 9 degani faqat mendan o'rganishing kerak degani emas. U ya'ni boshqa o'qituvchilar 8 yarim oy ular ham juda yaqin degan, demak ular yomon degani emas. Bunda to'q faqat bu i baribir o'z butun O'zbekistonga ikkita odam bo'lgan i bu hammani o'qita oladi degani emas. Juda ham zo'r o'qituvchilar bor, juda ham tajribali ustozlar bor. Ulardan ham o'rgansa bo'ladi. Va yana oxirgi narsa o'sha rasa hamma kommentariyada so'radi o'zi kim birinchi oldi, kim mendan qildi. Bu narsalar to'g'risini aytgan, muhim, unaqa muhim rol o'ynamaydi. O'zbekistondan ikkita chiqdi, ya'ni bizdan chiqdi shu narsa. O'zbekistondan o'zimizdan o'ramizdan, ya'ni kimdir chet elga kelib olmadi yoki boshqa bo'lmadi. Shu narsa muhim bo'ldi. Ha, shu narsa. Detallariga keladigan bo'lsak, muhodara degani-ki, 19-fevralda bekistgan 28-fevralda bo'ldi. Muhodara degani-ki, birinchi 8.5 chiqdi, keyin Iordan keyin speaking 8 dan 9 ga o'zgardi. 9 chiqdi bekist ekan-ki, imtihondan keyin shu ball chiqdi. I yana apellyatsiyaga ham berdingiz, uni ham endi bu podcast chiqqanda balki javobi chiqib qolar. Keyin en vajn narsasi to'g'ri to'g'ri javoblar bir kunda bir vaqtda chiqqani shu. Bir kunda chiqdi ikkala ball ham. Ya'ni first liners are both of them. 3rd of March 2023 is a historical day, <laughs> let's say. Da, shu podcast bilan shu animeda argumentni to'xtatish kerak. Ikkalasiga ham men sizlarga Crazy ya'ni bu yerda kimdir to'g'ri, kimdir noto'g'ri, kimdir kuchli, kimdir kuchsiz emas. Bitta ikkala anaq ustoz mana shuncha harakatdan keyin, shuncha qadamdan keyin olishgan o'zi juda katta narsa bo'ldi. I yana shu foydali o'zligi shu kuzatib boradigan bo'lsangiz, Begiz ekani o'zlarini bloklari Begizot Mehramedov kanallari, Telegram kanallari, Muhammadali ekan bilan Alisher ekani, Alisher post degan kanal bor. O'zligi yozgan essaylar, yana foydali ma'lumotlar Begiz ekan ikkalamiz ulashib borishadi. Bemalol foydasi yo'q bo'ladi. Ya'ni bitta narsa bugun Akmal aka bo'lmadilar. Akmal aka siz bu birinchi podkastimiz. Safarda bo'lib qolganlar uchun tez bo'lib ketgan uchun bu narsalar o'zimiz olishga harakat qildik. Akmal aka xafa bo'lmasdi degan bitamiz. Rahmat kelganingiz uchun. Bahorasi birinchi suhbatimiz yana bo'ladi. Bahorasi. Enjoy the lot guys. Appreciate you so much for your time. Rahmat. Yeah. Rahmat. Thanks a lot.